Here I have a sideways parabola. And it's got a vertical or horizontal expansion of 3. So imagine this sideways parabola. It's opening to the right. Okay, it's been kind of stretched it a little bit by 3. And we want to move it this graph so the vertex from 0, 0 translates to 3 to the right, 5 down. So you know, it's going to look like this, right? I'm going to grab that. I'm going to go 3 to the right, 5 down. So there's my, there's what it should look like, okay? So the location of this vertex is going to be at negative, or sorry, 3, negative 5. Okay, how can I write the equation? Well, really this, if we can kind of think uh, the opposite of our x's and y's for a regular parabola, this is, you know, we can do this fairly easily. So we can say that this is x equals, well, the horizontal now is going to show up on the other side here. Okay, so it's going to show up on the other side. So that plus 3 horizontal really should be plus 3 here like this. Okay, so it's going to move 3 to the right. Okay, so when the variable, the translation is on the other side of the x, is going to be in the correct direction. And then for the y's, okay, this moved 5 down. Now, since the translation with the y is with the y, we should really do it the opposite. So it should end up being plus 5. Maybe I'll just do that in a different color. That should end up being plus 5. Okay, so this is it. We can just leave it like that. The other way we can consider this is we can just consider this entirely like a quadratic, all quadratics. Okay, so let's call that one. An alternative way of doing it is just doing all as a quadratic. I'm going to do minus 3. And then the y is going to be opposite. I just do everything opposite. Okay, and I can just leave it like that. That's good enough. Okay, this is good enough. These are both good enough. Now, if we want this one to look like that one, we can just move that minus 3 as a plus 3 on the other side. So there's two strategies to do this. Treat this like a regular parabola, but you have to think of the x's are the ones that are doing are going the right way around. The y's are going to be the opposites. Okay, or you can do this entirely as a translation and expansion compression in terms of a, how we do quadratics. Everything is opposite, and we keep those translation and compression factors with the variables. In fact, this horizontal expansion of 3, we could actually express over here as divide by 3, and that would be the exact same thing. Okay, So either way is perfectly fine. Okay, so looking at this one here, we've been given two asymptotes this time. And we're being asked to find a possible, so this is just possible equation of the hyperbola. So first of all, it, what does this actually look like? If we sketch in the asymptotes, we get a very good idea what this is going to look like. Okay, so this is going to be 2x plus 1. Okay, so it's going to be a line like that, goes through a y-intercept of 1. And this is going to be the same y-intercept, but it's going to be the opposite slope. Well, nicely, where these graphs intersect is the center of the graph. Okay, so our center, in this case, is an easy coordinate to find. Now, we can intersect those two algebraically to find the center if we have to, but there it is. The ratio of a to b is based on the slope. Okay. My slope is 2 to 1, so my a to b ratio is 1 to 2. Okay, my rise is 2. My run is 1. Okay, that doesn't mean that a is equal to 2, or sorry, b is equal to 2 and a is equal to 1. We don't know. Okay, so we have this situation here that we don't know. So I could just kind of draw in my rectangular box. We don't know. If this is even trans x or y. Okay, so we have our equations that's going to start looking like this. Well, a possible equation would be this. Okay, so this is one possible. I'm going to call this possible. We'll just call this possibility one. 
it could be x minus 0 squared, y minus 0 squared, or y minus 1 squared, and the a and b values could just be 2 and 3. So 2 and 1. So we can go 1 and 4. Okay, so 1 squared and 2 squared. And we can just make it equal to 1. Okay, possibility 2 would be doing the same thing, make it equal to negative 1. Okay, so we can either make this 1, negative 1. That's just one possibility. So there's infinite possibilities here. So another, and I'll generalize this a little bit more. Okay, another possibility is the slope ratio could be two to four. Right? It could be, you know, could be five to ten, you know, six to twelve, etc. Okay, there are lots of possibilities that we can, and this just goes on forever. So what I can, I'm going to just general start generalizing this then. Okay, so this is one. You could put, replace this with, you know, one or four. But we could, I'm going to start generalizing this. I'm going to generalize this as this. X minus zero squared over N. Okay, and minus y minus 1 squared over 2n. Right, sorry, I'm going to make that squared. 2n squared and n squared. And that's going to equal plus minus 1. Because we, 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 we still don't even know if this is trans x or y. Okay, so there's lots of possibilities. We could draw Based on the information given, we can draw trans x, we can draw trans y, okay, we don't know, okay, so that's, we, we need to then generalize that, okay, so this is just a, a more of a generalization of this problem. So there are I've listed a, but a few A's and B's at work, but again, we can, there are an infinite number of possibilities for this. So to express that, I've done it in this way.